This is a good question from Kyle Whittington, just to set it up. You mm -hmm. know, you often hear Catholics say that Christ said that the gates of hell will not overcome the church. Therefore, we should expect weeds within the field. We should expect sinners, but the church will remain. Well, for some people, they're like, really, is this remaining? So the question is, what would it look like for the church to have failed? I understand as a Catholic, you think that's an impossibility, but... I mean, what would that look like? If you were wrong, Christ didn't establish the Catholic Church, uh, what would it look like for it to have failed? Well, I would say that nowhere on the face of the earth could you find the church. I mean, short of that, uh, the church is still there, you know. But I mean, the what church... about her failing in her teaching mission? I mean, you could have the Catholic Church, quote unquote, on every land but what if she's teaching heresy and has abandoned well that would it? be the anti-church that would be the false church that wouldn't be the true catholic church you know so unfortunately we're going to have to decide who we can trust and who we can believe and who we can follow but we have to do it on the basis of a sound knowledge of what the faith is mm. you know and we we have to be able to say this is the faith that isn't the faith this bishop's teaching the truth this bishop isn't you know this parish is teaching the truth this parish isn't i'm afraid that we're morphing into the Anglican Church, you know, that we're going to have conservative dioceses and mm -hmm. liberal dioceses, and it's really going to be a different gospel, a different faith, different morality. So it looks like we're moving in that direction, and unless there's an intervention from the Lord, I don't see the German bishops or all the others that are coming forward now declaring that they don't believe what the Church teaches, changing that. You know, even if the the final sin and process kind of papers things over and yeah. ends up reaffirming the faith with little loopholes, uh, I don't see how these bishops and cardinals that have declared themselves as not believing what the church teaches are going to change their belief. We have this language in um, about it being di um, homosexuality being intrinsically disordered um, and the distinction you mentioned in your piece about orientation and sexual activity. Is that a place where, you know, you would advocate for change in that language, change in yeah, church discipline? I have. I have and others have. I, I, I've, I've said for some years I felt and others have too, rather prominently. I think they're just going to go on. They're going to say, no, we're not breaking from Rome. You know, we're not, we're not teaching against the faith, but we're, talk, we're talking about pastoral application, pastoral compassion. And so they're going to end up affirming people in serious sin without actually declaring that they're doing that. So I, I think that's clearly where we're heading short of an intervention. But to say that the Catholic Church may be morphing into the Anglican Church, isn't that just to say that the Catholic Church is failing or will fail? Well, parts of the Catholic Church are going to fail. And and is it like 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 they have like like yeah. the Church of North Africa disappearing? Uh, it used to be strong. That's the, the Church of Augustine, the Church of Cyprian, the Church of you know yeah you know. So the Church can disappear in in sections of the world. The Church can be unfaithful to its mission in parts and mm -hmm. disappear. Um, Jesus didn't promise that the church in this city and this state will will endure to the end, you know. Is, and and actually, the picture we get, Matt, and this is one of the radical things that Scripture reveals to us. The Catechism of the Catholic Church also teaches, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Paul says, "Don't be alarmed by so-called prophecy saying Jesus has already come or is just about to come, because two things need to happen before the Lord returns." Mm -hmm. These two things are very shocking. One is the great apostasy. So what's an apostasy? It isn't something that pagans do. It's something that Christians do. Mm. And it's the turning away from faith on the part of those who once had it. So when Jesus says, when the Son of Man returns, is he going to mm. find any faith on the earth? That sounds pretty bleak. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And Second Thessalonians chapter 2 kind of unfolds that. The great apostasy. We're certainly living Where in... Where is that? Sorry, I'll look it up. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay. And, and so Paul says there's two things that need to happen. One is the great apostasy. And we're certainly seeing a great apostasy. We really are. We're seeing huge sections of traditional Catholicism and Christianity depart from the faith. Nations that once were proudly Catholic are now yeah. anti-Catholic. Yeah. 
Think of Quebec, think of Ireland. Yes, yes. Think of France, think of Italy, think of Germany, think of the Scandinavian Wherever. countries. Yeah. You know, th think of traditional, think of Canada, you know, oh, uh, you know, like so. Try not and and, and that, that battle's going on here in the United States too. But, you know, fortunately, one of the blessings that God has given us is uppity lay people like you, you know, who know the faith and are actually mm -hmm. proclaiming it and actually being a voice of clarity for people. You know, we have an educated laity here yes. that has a, a freedom and a courage to preach and teach the truth that I think is really almost unique in the world right now, which yeah. is very special. So the great apostasy. The second thing Paul says is that there's something restraining evil. There's something that's holding back evil, but it's going to be removed. And then we're going to see unrestrained lawlessness. So I don't know if there's any restraints that haven't been yet removed in our culture, you know, different ways. The country splitting into different parts, you know, the red states and the blue states, it's a little bit like the Catholic Church splitting, you know, along some of those mm -hmm. same issues. Paul goes on to say, then the law, the man of lawlessness will be revealed most people feel like that's the Antichrist. And then it says, with every deception available to him, false signs and wonders, which is why true signs and wonders are, are <laughs> we need to distinguish between true signs and wonders and false signs and wonders. False signs and wonders don't bring people to conversion. They don't bring people to faith. They bring people to marvel at what's just happened or at the person who's caused them to happen. True signs and wonders are given for the purpose of revealing Jesus and bringing people to Jesus. Then it goes on to say, with every deception available to him. So it's gonna be false signs and wonders, it's gonna be deception. That's why recovering our confidence in sacred scripture and the teaching of the church and knowing it is absolutely important. The only way we're not gonna be deceived is, is two things. One is Jesus says, my own, know my voice, and I know mine. So we need to know the voice of the Lord. That comes from prayer. That comes from holiness. That mm -hmm. comes from growing in union with him. That comes from being accustomed to, to being in his presence. But it also comes from knowing what he says, the objective word of God, because there's still a lot of sympathy for Jesus in our culture, but it's a sentimental sympathy. Oh, Jesus is a kind person. He's so inclusive. He's so merciful. Mm -hmm. But people will never have the real Jesus if they separate Jesus from his teaching. So we need to really know the real Jesus. And the only way we can know the real Jesus is not just through our experience in prayer, but for paying attention to the Word of God, paying attention to what he says about himself, paying attention to what he says about the world, paying attention to what he says about sin, paying attention to what he says about the consequences of not believing and not obeying. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Would you like this beautiful, very high quality, definitely not made in China, not that there's anything wrong with that, pints with Aquinas beer stein for free, sent to your door? Would you also like a copy of The Jill sent to your door four times a year? This is the Pints with Aquinas newspaper, by the way. If you do, go to mattfrad.locals.com and become an annual supporter for any amount. We'll send you that stuff for free and you get a bunch of other free things in return. You'll get more information by going over to mattfrad.locals.com. Thanks.